Well, welcome back to our uh, yearly reading. As we come to uh, 1 Kings chapter 21, this week you're going to be reading 1 Kings chapter 21 through 2 Kings chapter 14. So I hope you've continued your reading, but there's only grace here. So if not, you're forgiven. Let's pick it up. And here's what I want you to be looking for in this week's reading. Remember that we've got a divided kingdom at this time. Of Israel, ten tribes are to the north and two tribes are to the south. The ten tribes, the northern kingdom is called Ephraim and the southern kingdom is called Judah. Now, all the kings you're going to find out in the northern kingdom, well, they never honor God. And we come to the account of the worst one and you're going to read about Ahab. Remember, he is the one that brought Baal worship into Israel by the influence of his wife Jezebel. You remember her name. Not many people name their daughter Jezebel anymore or ever. Anyway, the prophet Elijah, you're going to find ministers during this low period, during the time of Israel. And Ahab has these different encounters you're going to read with Elijah. And they never turn out well. And Ahab continues to worship the false gods. Uh, one story you're going to read that's going to really bother you is Ahab's treachery in the matter of Naboth's vineyard. Uh, he sees his vineyard that he wants. He goes to Jezebel, gets evil counsel, and uh, you'll see what happens. Well, he's going to die later in battle because of his constant rebellion against God. Uh, the next section you're going to read is going to be the, well, the corruption of the relentless succession of bad kings all the way from Ahaziah to Hoshia. The situation in Judah is in the southern kingdom is not much better but you're going to read more and more about these two kingdoms, the kingdom to the north and the kingdom to the south. Now, this dark period of time in the northern kingdom is interrupted only by two godly prophets, Elijah and Elisha. And this is the week you're going to read how Elijah is taken up directly into heaven in the most remarkable way. But his cloak falls upon his disciple, uh, his mentee, and that is Elisha. And what's interesting about what you're going to read, the stories about Elisha, is there are more miracles performed by this prophet Elisha than any prophet or really anyone in the entire scripture. And so he is like no other prophet, and he keeps exposing the unbelief of the people. Well, then you're going to, in your reading, come to the story of Nahum, Naaman. Now, Naaman is the captain of the army of Syria, but he's got leprosy, which is really a nasty disease at that time. So he goes to Elisha to, to become healed. Uh, but Elisha gives him a very humble way to do that in a river. He doesn't want to do it at first, but finally he does humble himself, and you'll see what God does. Well, by this time, the Syrians will plot to capture Elisha, but, but God's going to intervene, and Elisha is going to continue to do these remarkable miracles. Well, then you're going to see also you'll continue to read the succession of bad kings to the north. As a matter of fact, all the kings to the north are going to end up being men that set themselves against God and his worship. Jezebel's daughter, uh, her name is Athaliah, well, she kills all the descendants of David except for one, Joash. Now, this is really the work of the devil because do you remember the uh, Davidic covenant back in 2 Samuel 7? That's when God says, okay, David, you're not going to build my temple. Your son will, Solomon. But I will establish your kingdom forever. It's going to come from uh, uh, your seed, your descendants, that they shall sit on the throne of David. As we know, in the future, Jesus Christ, the son of David, will. Well, here, Jezebel's daughter tries to kill all the descendants of David, which would have wiped out that whole covenant. But Joash survives. Now you're also going to read that Elisha dies in chapter 13. Uh, with honor, and a very interesting thing happens with his bones. I'll be anxious to hear maybe what you think. Anyhow, we'll pick up the drama next week as we continue to study and read through the Old Testament.